Jadarani, this uh, very nice picture that you're painting. Can you tell me what inspired you to paint in this style? Well, uh, this is... First, it's a picture of uh, a very ancient scene that took place 5,000 years ago in India. Um, there's a very popular ancient book of spiritual wisdom called Bhagavad Gita. And this is a painting for the cover of a Hindi translation of that book. And I was originally inspired to paint in this style uh, by my spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who um, is the person in the painting's representative. This person here is Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, according to all the revealed scriptures. Bhagavad Gita, which this is the cover of, is the ABC of spiritual scriptures, the basic essence of the scriptures. And his representative in this world uh, is my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. He came to the West in 1965, and I met him in 1966 on the Lower East Side of New York. And I realized he was teaching something that was very, um, that my heart was calling out for. He was offering eternal life, he was offering life of no problems, he was offering uh, a life of full knowledge and coming and he would lecture on this book, Bhagavad Gita, which means literally the Song of God. So um, being inspired by him I became his disciple and then he began engaging me in paintings. So this will be the history of how the style came. First uh, he had me copy from Indian prints of Krishna and his associates in his spiritual abode called Vrindavan. Then a couple of years later, when he was um, beginning to accelerate his book, book publication, which is translations of the Vedas, uh, then I would read the manuscript about different universal histories, different um, stories of uh, demigods or God himself or great devotees of God. And although the stories are not symbolic or allegorical, there's always a lesson for us modern people to learn on how to um, develop higher consciousness and awareness of ourself and God. So I would read the manuscripts and combining the subject matter of the Indian prince and the way that they wear their clothes and the armor and the um, helmets and to get it authorized what the thing looked like so I didn't put an American helmet on. Um, combining that with um, our own Western culture's Renaissance art but trying not to make the features muscular, but keeping them sweet and soft and smooth like in the Indian pictures and like in the descriptions in the, in the Vedic scriptures themselves. We combine the um, Eastern or Vedic subject matter and the details, including everything is from the scriptural description as well as the Indian traditional prints. Um, the style of the chariot, the, uh, the design work, the architectural work, the ornaments of the horses, uh, even the type of mustache or bow that they had in those days. Combining that with the realism and chiaroscuro, the lighting, the three-dimensionality and depth of the Renaissance painters like Rembrandt or um, uh, Tintoretto or others of that period, yet making it lighter. Lighter means whenever I look at an old master's picture, everything is so heavy and dark and dismal and muscular. 
and the cloth looks like it's made of burlap or heavy wool. So keeping it lighter and the subject matter, the ancient Vedic um, pastimes of the Lord or instructions of the Lord, we combine the East and the West along with instructions from Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master. If there was something lacking in the, um, in the description in, this, in the manuscript, like for example that the um, ears of these horses, although they're white, are blue. That I learned from uh, another uh, spiritual guru that I have now, Srila Narayan Maharaj, who, whose translation I'm painting for, he told me that the horse's ears are blue and I wouldn't have gotten that from any manuscript that I have now. So combining the instructions of the saintly realized souls, and I've had the good fortune to have two in my one life, um, and the ancient manuscripts themselves, and the Indian prints, and the Western Renaissance period, or Raphaelite period, pre-Raphaelite painters, I like them very much to their style. Combining all that together, um, the style came out. And many people have called it Neo-Vedic art. Mm -hmm. A new spiritual revolution in art. It's certainly very colorful. And um, I heard that Srila Prabhupada uh, described them as windows to the spiritual sky. Mm -hmm. Would you like to say anything like that? Mm -hmm. Um, I began painting for him and his books and temples in uh, 1966 in New York City in the Lower East Side and he invited me to come and paint. First I was painting downstairs in the temple room but then after a few weeks he kindly invited me to paint right in his own quarters. So I was painting in the room where he and his followers uh, would do the religious ceremonies and worship of Krishna and in one corner I set up my paints so he would come in very often and give inspiration or practical instructions on what something looked like for example Krishna's palms are red like red lotus uh, flowers and the tips are like the petals of lotuses. So he would come in and tell me things like that, or Krishna's eyes should be shaped like lotus petals. Um, uh, so sometimes he would just give statements like the one you said, that these paintings are windows to the spiritual world. Um, right now, the spiritual world is everywhere, but it's like we have cataracts on our eyes. And we can't see cataracts of material contamination or material identification that I am God or I am this body. So the um, beautiful spiritual world is closed off to us because of that pride. So um, Prabhupada would come in and say things like, uh, we have cataracts in our eyes, but the paintings, although we, we ordinary people can't see the spiritual sky, the paintings our window, so even with our cataracts, we get we can get a glimpse. And because the paintings are not made up by by me or the other my other god brothers or god sisters who are working in the Prabhupada's direction, but they're authorized. Uh, it's actually the spiritual world coming. And although in the beginning we we may look and see, oh, there's paint, but because it itself is the purifying factor by continually looking and hearing and taking uh, instructions from this pure devotees like Prabhupada, uh, gradually the real thing becomes manifest. And this becomes the reality, and this shadow world is revealed as a shadow. So he, another thing that he said was very interesting when he came in to the room one day, besides the fact that it, the windows to the spiritual world he said, these paintings of Krishna will be like the rain after the drought of mundane art, and everyone will be attracted. Well, we can certainly see why. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
do anything wrong. It's um, Krishna's directing everyone perfectly. Okay.